Howdy, my name is Justin Sines, the 4-H and Urban Youth Agent here in Montgomery County. Today's episode of 4-H Aggregation, we are heading to the coast with the Texas 4-H Water Ambassadors to learn about a different type of farming, aquaculture, and how the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department Sea Center is raising some of Texas's top saltwater game fish. Later, we'll head to Galveston Island to help restore part of the coastline. So without further ado, let's get started. What we do here is we produce red drum. That's our signature fish. That's why we started and that's what we do the most of. We're supposed to produce seven million this year. 15 million statewide, seven million out of this facility. Spotted sea trout, uh, the goal statewide is 10 million. We're supposed to be five. And the southern flounder is a work in progress. We're still doing thousands on that. But those are the three, three fish that we produce. So we are not actually on the coast here, and all of these are saltwater fish. So we have to have a source for salt water. This, this tower is a terminus for an 18-inch pipeline that runs five miles to Freeport. They pump water from the Dow Barge Canal in Freeport into that blue box up there, and we use it here in the hatchery. That blue box is a drum filter that removes anything in that water bigger than 500 microns, which is half a millimeter. From there, the water can go in this big pond behind me. This is eight acres. This is a reservoir, which is a true reservoir. This is water that we can use to run the hatchery for a period of time if the pumps go down or if there's a toxic algae bloom off Freeport where the water quality is bad. It can go in there, or it can go on the other side of this building. There are 36 little one-acre ponds where we grow out the, the fingerlings, and it can go in directly into those. The hatchery water's got to be really pristine. And we're going to go walk through what we call the life support room where they treat the water. There are eight, there are eight identical modules in this room that consist of a pump, a sand filter that filters down to 20 microns, which is 0.02 millimeters, about the diameter of a hair, a buffer to adjust the pH, a heat exchanger, I'm sorry, uh, ultraviolet light exposure to kill the bacteria in it, heat exchanger to adjust the temperature, and then a control system that does, controls all that. So what we're doing with those eight modules is, we've got some redfish down the hall here who think it's October right now. And we can trick the fish into spawning throughout our production season, which starts in April and goes till probably September, October. We're gonna see the fish. They're, each module has four tanks, they're 3,500 gallons in each tank. There'll be five fish in, in each of the redfish tanks, three females and two males. We're not trying to modify the, the fish. We're not trying to make bigger fish, better fish, faster fish. We're trying to just make more fish that we, had, that we started with. So the fish that we're gonna see in here were harvested somewhere around here. Turns out there are two populations, genetic populations of redfish in Texas, upper coast and lower coast. They're not real picky about where they came from, but all of our fish are upper coast fish. We're gonna use them for, for no more than four years. We're gonna replace a fourth of them every year. And every winter we shuffle the pairing so that we get genetic diversity. We don't want the same fish paired up the whole time they're here. When they collect the fish, they, they bring them in, they weigh them, they measure them, they sex them, and they, they they tag them, they put a, a microchip in the fish so they can track them through the hatchery just like your cat or your dog. So I think it's pretty cool. All right, when they spawn, they spawn at night. The, the females will release from 200,000 to 2 million eggs a night and they can make this go on for a month. The fertilized eggs float, remember? This is called an egg collector and what it does is it siphons the water off the top of this tank and then returns it from the bottom. So over the, over the night, the stuff that's on top will collect in here and the biologists will come in early, early in the morning and harvest the eggs to process them. They're gonna move into the incubator room we're going in just a minute. They'll hatch in about 24 hours into what's called a yolk sac larva. It's kind of a proto fish. This guy is good for 36 hours. He'll use all the energy in that yolk sac and at the end of that, he's got a tail, he's got a gut, he's got an eye, he's got a mouth, he's ready to go. You got a little working fish here and he's ready to move out. So about 60 hours or, or three days from, from fertilization till they move out to the pond. At the end of 35 days, there you've got these little fish that are about an inch and a half long. 
They drain the pond over, over two days, come in early in the morning. These guys work hard. Early in the morning and then harvest the fingerlings. They're gonna weigh and measure and count these guys. They've already figured out where they need them and where they can take them. So they're gonna load them up in one of these trailers. These are 200 gallon transport tanks that have oxygen infusion. They're gonna get the, the fingerlings in there, make a beeline out to one of these sites and release the fish into the wild. Our coastal wetlands play a vital role to the overall ecosystem of our Gulf of Mexico. Did you know roughly 95% of all species found in the Gulf utilize wetlands as nurseries? These wetlands provide the perfect habitat for growing young fish, crabs, and shrimp. They provide the perfect shelter from predatory species along with ample food sources. Let's catch up with the Texas Forage Water Ambassadors as they help to restore our coastline by planting smooth cord grass. And to plant our marsh grass, we're gonna use this tool called a dibble. And you'll put your foot up here on this lever and step all the way down until your foot is level with the ground. It would be a lot easier in there. It's like, you know, stepping on the And you'll put your lever all the way down, move the dibble back and forth like this to create a hole. You kind of see how it's creating one here? It'll create a deeper hole. Then, once you think you've gotten a pretty good hole, point the dibble towards you. Your partner is going to count out how many do we want? Two or three. Two or three. <laughs> Let's say two. Two stems, and you're going to plant it in the hole that you just created. So you want to grab down here by the roots, but if you grab up here and try to, you might snap the stem. Okay, so grab, grab by the roots. And there's going to be water up to here. So imagine you can't see where you've just created this hole, right? So it's teamwork. Once she plants, she's going to say, okay, you can remove the dibble while you hold the stems there. Then you'll both step, this, the roots would be all the way under the mud, compact this stem into the water. Once you think that you've done a good job, give it a few tugs. If it starts to wiggle like this, you'll want to redo it because the wind and waves will just wash it away. Um, so give it a few tugs, make sure it's really stable in there. Someday. Oh, once you plant one, measure with one foot away to do the next one, just in a straight line. You're gonna plant horizontal to the land. We'll show you, we'll give you a spot with your partner. A big thank you to the Texas 4-H Water Ambassadors for allowing us to tag along on their Water Academy tour. If you're interested in joining and becoming a Texas 4-H Water Ambassador and are in the 9th through 12th grade, you can visit texas 4 hwaterambassadorscom to learn how to apply. We hope you enjoyed this episode of 4-H Aggregation and until next time, we will see you later.